Okay, welcome to those who made it to part three. Uh, <laughs> anyways, now we are looking into a slightly different method. So let me show you this real quick. And uh, as it's simulating, we will quickly see what's going on. Or actually, let me just uh, show you the, the mesh. And voila. And uh, what we want to do from this is we want to generate a 2D sprite. And of course, we can again use the fake vet method if you like to. So you just have to make sure that enough droplets have separated from each other. And then you can start baking the, the data into the vertex colors. And then you can also use this method with the material assigned to it, like the, the material that we made from the last video, actually. So from part two. But anyways, let's now look into the emitter. And very similar to any other fluid sim, we start off from a sphere and then we add some noise with the mountain sop. And then we add some uh, points. And again, I have this point separation, which is also set on my fluid object in my sim. And then I add some directional velocity. So not based off on my normal. So actually, I don't really need this. And then I say, OK, this is my odd emitter. And then before I bring this into my simulation, I'm also creating a collider. And these particles then push onto the surface of this collider. And let me show you real quick. So again, it's a sphere with some noise. And I soften the, the positions a little bit. And then I animate the position as well so that I get even more velocities upon the impact because the, the impact comes from both ways. And then uh, I rest this and I pack it for my collisions because now I'm uh, sourcing the collisions in my uh, dot network. So here, like you can see. And then I bring this in here with the static object. And there's not much going on other than that uh, I set my collisions here to concave uh, inside my bullet data. And then I drop down a static solver and I merge it with my flip solver. And the flip solver is quite similar to the last Houdini file that I uh, did a breakdown about. But anyways, uh, we then put down this fluid object where we link our emitter. And this time it's actually automatically sourcing our velocities because Unreal recognizes those. So here from the attribute wrangle, I set this velocity vector. And it then reads this in automatically. And then I add a bit of gravity and it simulates it for me. OK, so now we can mesh this out. So here, like I've done before, just uh, give me a moment. Like I've done before, uh, I'm masking uh, some points and I'm removing them. Uh, you can always go back to the first part where I did more of a deeper breakdown. But uh, I don't want to repeat myself, so let's just move on. And then I bake out the high poly and the low poly. But this time we won't need the low poly because we want to use the high poly instead because it has a lot more nicer information. OK, so now we can go to baking. OK, so now we can hide this one and we can enable the maps baker and we can enter. So first of all, we bring in the file cache. Uh, actually, you could also use the... <laughs> The object uh, here, the object merge, and then grab the the output. But uh, I guess uh, this time I use the file cache. Uh, but that that doesn't matter. I, I just read in the file. Uh, I clean up the mesh a little bit. I remesh it a little bit, and then uh, let's see what's going on here. Yeah, and then I blur it so that I smoothen out the the sharp edges a little bit and make sure that all points are fused together. And then I, I put down this connectivity. So to find the separate elements for what was that? Yeah, well, basically I'm measuring the size for each piece and then I'm removing those which are smaller. And then uh, here I put down a grid and then uh, I unwrap it. And then uh, I plug this into my maps baker. So here you can see it and then you can visualize it here. And then uh, here I re-rotated my mesh so that it uh, nicely fits in between. 
go let me just show you that like so and uh yeah there's not much going on i just uh have a few settings and then you can see here my export directory and then uh, I export my normals and opacity those are the most important the other ones are less important but i use those to generate even an extra texture for even more visual purposes but most important is these two okay and then you know i i just render it out uh, you can also set a frame range uh, let's just say if you you want to have a flipbook but I don't need it in this case because I'm manually dissolving. Or you could actually also use a combination of both. But anyways, now we can move on and we can go into our image network. Okay, and then we can dive in. And then here you can see me import those textures again. And what's important to note is that I keep those local directories so that my hip file recognizes those more easily. So I recommend you to play by those rules as well. And then when I go to my composite view, and then I preview my normal, my uh, alpha, my ambient occlusion, my height map, and my thickness map. Although the ones that we will mainly need are those two. And then so I yeah I rename them to color. I give them I give them their uh, corresponding names like you can see. And here I need to uh, adjust the gamma because why? Because uh, after I merge those, here I bring them into uh, a substance designer file. Therefore, I needed to adjust my gamma. If you don't happen to have any substance designer, don't worry. Uh, this file comes with the downloadable content, and this is basically like an an export file. And when you open up the Houdini projects, it might be that it doesn't seem to work, but you just have to reload and then patiently wait, and then it will work. And then you will see all the parameters, regardless if you have Substance Designer or not. Uh, but anyways, I will do a little dive into the uh, Substance Designer project file. But first, let's move on, because then here I'm... Uh, I'm exporting three textures so let's first go to here and then you can see the dissolve map we have our detail map and also pay attention to the naming and then we also have our channel packed textures where we see the uh, dissolve map then we see also the height map and then here we have the ambient occlusion no that is the ambient occlusion this was the thickness and like I said, I renamed those, like you can see, because I will use my own prefixes. And then here I removed the alpha from the channel pack texture. So when I go first here and then look at the channel pack texture, uh, the alpha was the ambient occlusion, but eventually I ended up not using it. So uh, what I did was in the channel copy, I replaced the alpha channel with a value of one. So the RGB colors are still maintained. I just put the alpha to one. So voila, and we can export this. And then we export the other ones as well. And here I adjust the gamma in the opposite direction. Okay, and then we can look into the Substance Designer file. So let me bring this one up and then here I'm importing my inputs and here you can see my input and this is a preview texture. And because we have no input, we can now just enable our preview texture. And if we click away and then here we can see our global parameters and then I can just disable this flag. And now we are reading in our preview textures like you can see. Anyways. I am adjusting the, the texture a little bit. Like you can see here, I'm decreasing the size to avoid bleeding with the, the normal map. And then I smoothen that out a little bit again. And then I invert it because now I want to create a distance mask. So like you can see here, and it goes from white to like black values. Although for the smaller droplets, like you can see here, 
there's not so much of these black values. So that would mean that it might erode too fast. And we want to maintain those smaller droplets a bit longer. So therefore, I separated it into an, a duplicate of this distance nodes. And then I adjusted the parameter so that we have more black values into these smaller droplets. But of course, then the problem is that here we don't have a, a full gradient. So we want to blend between those. And the auto levels just make sure that we have more black values like you can see here. So voila. But anyways, I then blurred this uh, mask. And then I used the histogram scan to adjust the values. And then I used this as a mask to blend in between. And yeah, that's basically that. Then afterwards, I invert my texture back again. And then I want to apply a bit of noise. And I do this with a histogram scan. Although, like you can see here, it destroys the shape. You see? So I want to correct that. So I want to blend back with the initial shape. Like you can see here, it brings it kind of back. And yeah, then uh, I blur it again. And then I create this dissolve edge normal from it. And then afterwards, I also have my normals here. I don't do much with it other than that I add a bit more detail into the shape of it. So first I add a histogram scan. And then I adjust the levels a bit. I pow it. And then I blend it with my purling noise. And then I add this to add a bit more noise into it. But you can adjust the values, of course. And yeah, that's, that's mostly it. All next is, well, we have our... Uh, what is it? The height map, the thickness, and the ambient um, textures. So we merge them into a RGBA merge. And then in the R channel, we may not forget, we have this dissolve mask as well. So we are going to need that one. And yeah, that's, that's it. So now we can move over to Unreal to create the material. Oh, and the Houdini file of the blood splash that you saw in my Substance Designer project is also available in the downloadable content. Then here we are inside the material. But before we continue, let's first look at the textures. So here we have the detail normal, the dissolve normal, and the channel packed uh, texture with the dissolve map, the height map, the thickness. Okay, then let's go into the material. And first I take the UVs and then I have some switches that, that uh, toggle between using the sub UV function or not. But eventually what we are now seeing is basically this. But uh, let's just connect it back. And you can then see this goes into my texture everywhere. But first, I also disabled the particle uh, as, as particle because I want to preview a looping time. So here I set the looping timer function. This is a self-made function, but this is just this is just a time divided with a with a speed and then using a fracture. So we have the dissolve mask from the channel pack texture, and then I subtract to make it dissolve. But of course, I want to set a edge range, basically by dividing it and then clamping it. So now we have this. We have a small gradient in between. So I can use this to lerp in the edge normal. And then here you see this uh, texture. And then I'm lerping the alpha. And then when I preview it, you can now see this appear as we dissolve. And then I blend this with the current normal. So you see the normal and then the other one blends in. And then additionally to that, I also added in some, some uh, noise information from another normal texture. And additionally to that, I also had some pixel depth focus that, that uh, tweaks the strength of this normal depending on, on, on pixel depth. And because I had the height map, so here I called it depth, I was then able to find which pieces are normally closer to the camera, 
even though it is a flat sprite. And then I was adding that offset. But eventually I ended up not using it. And you can see here also, I keep it disabled. So I don't want to go too much in depth about this one. But anyways, uh, here we have our dissolve map. And I want to tweak the subsurface color depending on the edge. So here I'm inverting and then I am multiplying with my thickness map. So like you can see here. And then I multiply once again because the edges will receive more or will scatter more light. And then you can see this. And then voila, that's it, guys. All right, I think we're done. We went through all of this. So I hope you guys found this an amazing tutorial. I am sorry about the white blood splashes, but I hope you guys really enjoyed it. And if you did, then leave a thumbs up because I put my soul into making these tutorials and it is really difficult for me to find the time. So I would really appreciate it if you guys show some appreciation from your side because that would motivate me to continue making these tutorials. Anyways, if you don't, I'm still happy you watched my tutorial and I will see you in another one. Cheers.